the M's about to be the teenager. Conway machine and Harry Frog B cremator. Convert a switch on Glockiana with the green laser. They talk on the internet for pussy when they see him later. All right, so since that Snook video, I've pretty much been locked away in the editing dungeon, but I was able to get a lot of stuff done this morning. We have a rare opportunity right now. Big shout out to Valerie from American Baitworks for the knife. It always comes in handy since I always lose cutters. You know, it's like August 9th, the hottest time of the year down here. You wake up at 8 a.m., it's already 90 degrees, but we got overhead clouds. We got a little bit of rain and it's 75 right now, so it's comfortable to be out here. And I've been meaning to throw this for a while. Last time I saw my good friend and the Martin Scorsese of all this fishing film stuff, let's just say, Bud Cipolletti. He hooked me up with this right here. Little Mega Bass Sleeper Gill, three quarter ounce. Dude, I'm like, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to throw this, I really am. And uh, kind of wish I'd had it during the actual bluegill spawn. Like, can you imagine this on the river that we were fishing when they were eating all those bluegills in the lay down? But we got it now, and I feel like these are really good conditions to throw it. Just going straight braid on her. I have no experience throwing this swim bait. I'm, <laughs> dude, this thing just looks so good out of the package. I mean, come on, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at the way it falls. All right, well, this is not my spot, by the way. Kai actually stopped by here one day and caught, man, like a giant out of here. I think like a seven pounder. Ideally, I wanna go somewhere with a little more grass, a little more structure. Just stuff to fish this bait around. It casts really nice. I'll say that. This is not an ad, by the way. I'm in no way sponsored by Mega Bass. I would love Uncle Larry's to be sponsored by Mega Bass. You know, they're they're definitely one of those brands. Definitely one of those brands you gotta respect, but we have no affiliation. I would recommend that all of you, if you haven't seen it, go to probably Mega Bass's page, or I'm sure you can watch it on Featherwick or Maddie Wong's page. The film that Bud did on this bait is Probably one of the best pieces of fishing content I've ever seen. Oh, big old soft shell. We do not want that to eat this sleeper gill. That's for sure. Got him. Not a giant, but I mean, dude, this bait is gonna be amazing. Just losing his mind, that dog. Look at how this fish ate it. Look at how this little pounder ate this sleeper gill. Look at this thing. That is not a big bass either. That's what I like about this too. It's really compact. So you're really gonna get all the bites on it. Oh my God, fire ants. I literally just, let's clean the fish off. Oh God, they're on me too, they're on me, they're on me. Fire ants. <laughs> They got on the bass, and they got on me. I mean, that was a small one. Did you see how he ate that sleeper gill? I still got a few on me. I don't know if I even mentioned it on the channel either. 300, 301 now, to be precise. broken in so the area that we're entering currently I mean anything could happen I mean, I, I mean in a matter of seconds sparks could fly one of my most regrettable catches that I haven't filmed and it's you know purely because I was on my way back from running errands or something like that you know like typical stuff and I just had my rods with me and it was the same thing like this it was an August day and we had this random storm come through at like 11 a.m. and I pulled up here just to make a few casts right off this deep point and threw a seven inch Sanko out there. I mean, third cast hooked into this absolute monster. I mean, it was definitely over nine, huge fish. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the gill. Oh, she's looking fine. Like it could happen right there, right now. Boom, 10 pounder. My only thing about it in this type of environment is I know there's a lot of fish that are just out there deep in the open. I don't really know if this is the bait for that. I know a pond that this would be great for that we're definitely going to go to after this. I mean, I just know I'm going to get bites at this other spot. Look, a bluegill. A bluegill is following it. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I hope you guys can see that a little bit. 
a bluegill was just far. I mean, that would have been such an amazing shot to demonstrate the nature of this sleeper gill. Whew, God bless this weather. It's been so hot recently. I know it's been hot up north too. I've been hearing some things about triple digit days in Jersey. That's, that ain't so cool, man. All right, let's get out of here. Does this look familiar? Have you been to this one? You've been to this before. That The pond above that, I think you were with Brady one time and he lost a giant or something. Bro, I know exactly where you are. Oh, I think that's my spot. Oh yeah, hang on. I saw the guy's tilapia cast netting there. And he said, they, dude, they were tilapia cast netting. And he goes, bro, I just pulled a bass out of his gas net. And he showed me like with his hands. I was like, no, you didn't. To the, um, I'm honestly going to call it the Jesus Pond now. The Jesus Pond. <laughs> but you know the super good one with the, the big gator in it, obviously, the one that we fished a million times? Oh, yeah. I was going to go back there. Yeah. The guy started walking around on the far side by the bridge. Yeah. Dude, I caught like seven good ones in like seven casts there that night. Summer cold front, and I got this. That's you, you, you already, dude, you already, I've been to three ponds already, minimal results so far, but you know how it goes. It's like basically like having a boat except on land. You just make five, ten casts, you pick up, you move to one of the other 10,000 ponds and eventually lightning strikes. That's the thing, like they're all culverts, you just really- Got him, dude, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Is it a good one? Yep. It looks good. Yep. It's a good one. Oh shit, bro. Oh fuck. Oh, this is live action, folks. Oh, God! Ah! He got off. He was like a five pounder. No, it, it got off. It was like a five. Bro. Oh. I'm also going to catch a 40 inch bike plus that. I cannot wait to see the result. I know you are. I literally know it's going to happen. Dude, that was like a five. I've got wind knots in my braid. I've got like 100 yards left and like. Perfect. One bait. Two baits. Perfect. Per the jerk bait and the spoon. I'm literally just starting the spoon. Like, that's it. Yes, it is. Night, dude. Night, bro. Oh, you heard what Johnny said. We gotta keep moving around until we find him. That's it. I should have got up. I had my FaceTime positioned in a place where Johnny could see it, and I wanted to just kind of keep it there, so I was fighting it from the ground very stupidly. I mean, it wasn't, you know, a life-changing bass or anything like that, but it was a big one. I knew there'd be one in there. Just looked too good. I'm probably gonna go to what Johnny just described correctly as the Jesus Pond next. You guys have seen in multiple videos. Catch lots of fish there. We have returned to the Almighty. I don't think I'm gonna catch them here on it. Man, this is about to be demolition derby, I think, just because historically speaking, when these pads are in at this pond, they like to sit right in those pads. So I know I'm just going to be able to work this sleeper gill over and around those little pad clumps and probably get rocked. Like that. I missed one right away. See that? I tried to set one. Oh man. I thought I set into him right. I mean, that was instant. That was instant. Felt good too. I mean, I had him on straight braid. Made the same cast there. Let's see if he eats again. Nope. Not gonna eat twice. Again, I know this probably sounds like a promotional video at this point, but it's not. I'm just... Listen. <laughs> I'm gonna acknowledge a good bait when it comes across my way, whether I'm affiliated or not. Because I've been that way since Fishing Master 13 days. Let alone Bass Fishing Jersey. Or Eric the Intern. Of course, that one gets it perfect. <laughs> Look at that. That size fish destroys this thing. I know you really shouldn't bet your life on things like catching a fish in a certain spot, but. That was pretty cool. Skinny. Man, did this fish need this bluegill to be real. Big skinny girl. This is the 
sickly bass, but it counts, you know. My life was on the line, and I bet it on this spot. Oh, why did that happen? No! That's the end. Just like that, that's the end. All right, well, the death of that sleeper gill was uh, tragic, to say the least. But we made some rod modifications. We got the old trusty Tatula. And we're going to try to get bit on this Scum Frog Trophy Series Poppin' Frog. I've seen this thing do absolute damage. I myself have caught some very nice Florida bass on this bait. So we're going to see. You know, good conditions for it. This thing really does leave a nice pop. That one barely, barely, barely ate it. But at the same time, got it so good. Look at that. Sometimes that could be the big one that eats it like that. I haven't had to squeeze any water out of this frog so far too, which I definitely can say that I like. Perfect frog for this scenario too, where you got a lot of open water, some random patches of pads mixed with grass. You wouldn't want to throw this necessarily in a mat situation. God, missed him. My fault, for sure. Bet I get another one out of here. Watch it happen. Oh my God. I had one under there. Destroy it. Okay. Giant. <laughs> Scum frog. Trophy series popping frog. They like it. Shout out to frog eaters. You know what's funny about that too? So I missed that fish over there and somehow my Palomar not slipped. I was able to keep the frog, but it broke off. And I don't have cutters on me, I'm using braid. I'm being really lazy and you should never do this. I really didn't feel like going back to my car to get the cutters. So I just tied an improved clench knot. Like the one knot that you're definitely not supposed to tie with straight braid. That was such an epic catch. You could just hear that thing plop, plop. Got oh my God, it got off. Just running straight at me. That was another good fish. Could have had an absolute field day here if I landed all the bites I had. That was a bass eat. A little short. Oh my god. Got him! A little Ben Roethlisberger on the run. Turning out to be a pretty good evening, I would say. That catch was all visual. I saw that fish bust, literally threw it on the run, felt like it was a little short, but once I let it settle, I made that first hard pop, and I figured if that fish was eating in the area, she was probably gonna find it. Really, so much of frog fishing is a combination of what you see with your eyes and what you hear with your ears. It's a technique in bass fishing that really incorporates the senses pretty heavily. I've come to say over the years that it's pretty finesse, even though you're throwing 50 pound braid, a heavy rod, 
And once you set the hook, it's all power, obviously. But up until that point, you gotta be patient. You gotta make a lot of casts in an area sometimes. You gotta work the frog slow, especially when it's a popping frog like this. You know, you don't wanna be just burning down the bank, making a few pops, walking it, bringing it in. No, you wanna precisely get it within the little pockets where you think there's gonna be a fish. And in my case right here, that's these little pad clumps. And you wanna work it thoroughly. As many of you know, a lot of times, they're gonna hit it on the paws anyway. Oh, there he is. <laughs> There's the big gator. Look at this guy. A sizable animal. I don't even know if that's the one. Is it? I don't think so. I think that's a different one. Wow. And yeah, it definitely... Oh. I mean, maybe not. Oh man, hope Dave's not there. If he is, you guys are about to see an encounter. Did you see that? That bass could not have gone faster for that thing. Let it be known though, money. Where nothing attracts a gator quite like a spook. Look at this guy. Look at how fast he's going for this. Like it's over for this spook if I leave it. Yeah, you know I'm here. You know I'm here. Going for a f sneak attack on me. Whoa, see, there he is, look at that. Going for the sneak attack. All right, Gator, I've had enough of you. I've had enough of you and I've had enough of all this today. It's a good day, as always. We hope you enjoyed watching this feature presentation of Uncle Larry Outdoors. I shall return for more quite shortly. Fresh salt, something else entirely, who knows? <sighs> Beautiful Florida evening. We really got blessed with good weather this afternoon. I'm glad that I got to take advantage of it and bring the Uncle Larry's viewers along for the ride.